Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The empty set is bounded. Moreover, every real number is both an upper and lower bound of the empty set. Okay, now before we get into the proof, let's get some context. To start, we're going to say that given any subset of real numbers s and a real number u, we say that u is an upper bound of s if, for every element x in s, x is less than or equal to u. Second, given any subset of real numbers s and real number w, we say that w is a lower bound of s if, for every element x in s, x is greater than or equal to w. Finally, given a subset of real numbers s, we say that s is bounded if s has both an upper and lower bound. Okay, so now let's get into the proof. To start out, we know that the empty set is a subset of every set. So surely, the empty set is a subset of the real numbers. The reason why we're mentioning this is because this means we can apply the empty set to these three definitions. Now, we want to show that the empty set is bounded, which means we want to show that the empty set has both an upper and lower bound. And we're actually going to prove a stronger claim than just that the empty set has both an upper bound and lower bound, but we're going to prove that every real number is both an upper and lower bound of the empty set. So to do that, well, we're trying to prove the same about every real number, so give me an arbitrary real number. I'll call it t. We want to show that t is both an upper and lower bound of the empty set. And let's first show that t is an upper bound of the empty set. Well, what does it mean for t to be an upper bound of the empty set? Well, if we take s in our definition to be the empty set, and u to be t, well then, t is an upper bound of the empty set if, for every element x in the empty set, x is less than or equal to t. Well, since the empty set is empty, the empty set has no elements. So this statement is vacuously true. Right, this is vacuously true. And since this is precisely what it means for t to be an upper bound of the empty set, we have that t is an upper bound of the empty set. Now we want to show that t is a lower bound of the empty set. What does it mean for t to be a lower bound of the empty set? Well, according to this definition, if we take s to be the empty set and w to be t, then we have that t is a lower bound of the empty set if, for every element x in the empty set, x is greater than or equal to t. Well, again, this is vacuously true. And since this is precisely what it means for t to be a lower bound of the empty set, we have that t is a lower bound of the empty set. So what have we done here? Well, we have shown that given a real number t, we have that t is both an upper and lower bound of the empty set. Since t was arbitrary, this means that every real number is an upper bound and lower bound of the empty set. So, we have shown that this second part is true. Now we want to show that the empty set is bounded. Well, what does it mean for the empty set to be bounded? It means that the empty set has both an upper and lower bound. Right? Well, we've already shown that every real number is both an upper and lower bound of the empty set. So, in particular, 42 is both an upper and lower bound of the empty set. So, we see that the empty set has an upper bound, namely 42, and the empty set has a lower bound, namely 42. So, the empty set has at least one upper bound and one lower bound. And that's precisely what it means for the empty set to be bounded, so the empty set is bounded. So, we have shown that this is true, and this is true. And that's exactly what we wanted to prove. So this, completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.